Yes, Judaism. Well, you've, um, you've definitely joined the ritual-based religion. Right, that's why I, I, I didn't want to use yeah. that word, because yeah. it's... When I use ritual I'm in, in this context, yeah, thinking I'm thinking about of sacrifice, the, the sacrifice, but that's, not, that's yeah. not always the case. Okay, but the, the, the fact remains, then, that, as you suggested, there's a kind of substitute um, that's come into play because we can't enact this kind of, of ritual sacrifice anymore. So the prayers on the lips of people mm -hmm. are the substitute. Okay, mm -hmm. so then this goes back to my suggestion that perhaps we then also need to reread um, everything that comes before mm -hmm. Numbers 19, everything that mm -hmm. leads up to it. So then do we also need to, is there also a kind of substitute for the lesson whatever we want to call it, that we learn in number 16. I didn't see why the lessons would change because certain laws can't be carried out right now. I just wonder if instead of reading the death of Korah and his followers as a good thing, as something that needed to happen because they disagreed with Moshe, um, I'm just wondering if we might reread that as something that was negative, as something that doesn't need to happen in this era, since we can't be ritually purified um, in the wake of something like that. Mm -hmm. Isn't it possible that something like that now in this era shouldn't even happen because there's no possibility for ritual purification? I just, I mean, to be honest, I'm, I'm always looking for a way to um, um, incriminate Moses. Why? The whole Korok rebellion. Why? Because I, I, I think I don't like him in that chapter. I don't like him at all. Um, I think that he's out of control. I think he's throwing a tantrum. He doesn't like that people disagree with him. And so he somehow gets God to kill them. And that bothers me. And I don't think there's any r place in the tradition that says Korak was a good guy. I'm just I'm no, just but, scanning through right. the Wikipedia entry on the Torah portion of Korak. But he's not that terrible of a guy. He disagrees. He's a dissenter. So I mean, what 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 is the lesson we're supposed to learn from Number Sixteen? That if there's disagreement or dissension, do away with them. I mean, that is so antithetical to to Judaism. That is so. Um, it just seems that there's something wrong there. I just, I've always had a problem with number 16. Well, a lot of girls do. <laughs> yeah. I notice just, that as I've been right, dating. Right, right. The, uh, the, the more you date, the more you realize that the number sixteen is like a flaming yeah. sword between me and so it's, many women in yeah, this community. It's a very cliche thing for me to say as a woman that I have a problem with number sixteen. It's. <laughs> but th that doesn't I, make it any less valid. No. Right. But yeah, I mean, the number of girls that I've had tell me I got a problem with number sixteen. It's a lot. <laughs> but again, okay, it, I I tend to think of Torah as full of examples of what not to do, of how not to behave. And so that's how I always want to read number 16. And so then this morning when I reread numbers 19 and I realized that this whole process of purification isn't even a possibility, you know, maybe maybe we could somehow connect that to back to number 16 to kind of force a rereading of it. If if this is impossible, maybe there are some impossibilities for this era contained in number 16 as well. How do you feel about authority, Monica? Just <laughs> just generically, let me just give you authority and let me just throw that open. And how do you feel about people telling you what to do and what you can't do? I, I guess I'm not a huge fan of people telling me what to do. I mean, it depends if I'm in a position where I don't understand something and something's going to hurt me and someone tells me to do something and it's for my safety, and then they later explain it, okay, I can understand something like that, but, I mean, I'm an adult, um, I'm, you know, I've read a few books, I know a few things, um, I'm not completely ignorant, I think I can figure things out for myself, I don't know, I, I, I It's interesting really that you join a religion that has so much authority 
and hierarchy in it. Because I've got some yeah. problems with authority myself. Yeah. One or two. But. And yet I'm. I too have joined Orthodox Judaism, which is filled with authority. And hierarchy. But it's also filled with discussion and dialogue and disagreement about that authority. I mean, what we, um, you know, think of as halachic or, um, you know, having some kind of Talmudic authority um, is based on a series of arguments that are often not resolved. Um, I think that within the authority, I th this is the thing I love about Judaism. It's, it's extremely complex. Um, the legal component of Judaism is very complex and it's very sophisticated intellectually and there's always, um, you know, just a surplus of disagreement and dialogue that really is the foundation for what we call the authority. Um, you know, things aren't as, as cut and dry as they seem to be on the surface in Judaism. One thing I like about this Torah portion and much of the Torah is that it gives a lot of attention to washing. You like that? I like that. Yeah. I like cleanliness, don't you? Yeah, I, I really do. like it when people are washed and clean. Yeah. And smell good, you know. Yeah, yeah. So I think that totally rocks in this, this week's Torah portion and then a lot of, yeah. like, there's a lot of bathing going on and I think bathing is a really good idea. It is. You know, I, I, I don't remember if I mentioned this to you, but the movie that we were at last week, there was a woman who sat down and she took your seat and I told her she needed to move. I didn't tell you this No, story. no. It's a great story, so I'll, I'll yeah. tell you more later, yeah. but um, I told her she needed to move because yeah. somebody was sitting there yeah. and she said, well, I don't want to move, I want to sit in this seat. And she was very, very large, and she smelled rancid. Yeah. And she wouldn't move, and so I told her that she smelled. I said, you smell. Every time you move, I smell you. You need to move. There were plenty of other seats. And she said, well, I'm handicapped. And I said, well, you, you smell. You smell and you've taken my friend's seat. I should have given her... Um, photocopy of this. Yeah, yeah, at least like, yeah. read no, Numbers 19. Yeah. I mean, you may not dig Numbers 16, but, right, but definitely 19, read Numbers 19. It's, it's about very, cleansing. Yeah, applicable to you. Right, right. Yeah, I mean, you've noticed that too, don't you? A lot of fat people really smell bad. I just wonder what it is about fat people that causes them to smell so bad. A lot of people smell bad. But I just hugged a very, the, very tiny woman yesterday, and she smelled terrible. A tiny woman smelled terrible? Yeah, she you don't a, find she that very often. too, and she smelled terrible. Whoa. Mm -hmm. I she smelled terrible. I dated this woman once who was very cute, very, very cute. And uh, she really sweated. Is that, is that the sweated, or she, she sweat a lot? I guess it would be sweated. Yeah, she really, yeah. like... We were sitting out in the sun and we were kind of holding hands and just like the, the, the sweat was just pouring off her. And I, I, call me weird, I just don't find really sweaty girls attractive in their sweatiness. But you need to sweat a little bit. Yeah, a little bit of sweat. I, I, I prefer girls who perspire rather than sweat. See, I don't really perspire. I have a physical problem. And so, so you I often just will pour, you I just don't pour sweat. No, I don't sweat. Oh well, that's great. No, it's not because I'll pass out from heat stroke. Well, in that could be a downer. Because <laughs> my body isn't hydrating; it's not cooling itself off, and so I'll just pass out. So it's it's good to sweat. But at least you don't smell. Not not that so I know. So I think it's better. I think it's better that you pass right. out than that you smell. Because <laughs> if you you smell, you hurt other people. But exactly. if you pass out. And you hate yourself. Right, and Judaism is about um, our taking consideration for to other people, our neighbors. the community. That's right. Cleansing the sanctuary. Right. <laughs> and they had a bunch of fat people in there. Uh, and then there's also a lot of attention to detail, and and there's a lot of attention to earthware, and you can kind of see how Judaism developed its laws mm -hmm. about mm -hmm. kosher dishes, and which is really hard for me to deal with. I, I, I personally had no emotional or any other concern aside from Jewish law about non-kosher dishes because I don't eat dishes, but Judaism very clearly has a very basic